high intensity training uh, with lower loads. Uh, some research you've been involved with shows an increase in uh, sympathetic uh, ANS activity, which could potentially be damaging. Um, whereas high intensity with high loads did not significantly impact that autonomic modulation. Could you just explain explain that to me as simply as possible? Yeah, okay, so, so this was some work that we um, collaborated on with our colleagues in Brazil, specifically Dr. Paolo Gentile was senior author leading around that research, um, and they've got a great collaboration with a local hospital where they, they're able to do a lot of this kind of more clinical um, exercise science. Um, so that research came about um, primarily because um, when you think about resistance training um, and hypertensive patients, um, there is a kind of perception that you should probably avoid it because, um, uh, for example, uh, people may be more likely to perform a valsalva maneuver, there's an acute increase in uh, blood pressure which could be damaging and so on and so forth. Um, and if you are going to do it, then you should potentially use lower loads because a higher load might emphasize that and so it might potentially be damaging. Um, no one has really looked, though, at um, kind of parasympathetic or sympathetic nervous system activity um, in relation to different loads and resistance training in that population. And what some previous research has shown is that people who are hypertensive um, tend to have predominance of sympathetic um, autonomic, autonomic nervous system activity. Um, and so it, it might be something that you would like an exercise protocol to potentially not exacerbate. Um, so th this study essentially looked at comparing heavy loads and light loads, um, and contrary to kind of what the, sort of, I guess, uh, popular belief would be that the heavy loads might be worse because they might raise blood pressure, et cetera, we actually found that when we looked at the heart rate variability data and looked at indices of sympathetic and parasympathetic activity, there was no real change in that with respect to the high loads, but that the low loads exacerbated it. Um, so in essence, it's taking a, a population that um, already have elevated sympathetic activity um, and a low load condition when performed to failure might exacerbate that. So that's why it might suggest potentially a higher load might be safer in that respect. And you've got a sort of ballpark <coughs> time under load that you think is likely most Good question. I did miss that out. So again, this comes back down to um, you know, the fact that actually... There is little evidence that um, the time of load is important. And the reason we know that is because we know that heavy loads, which inherently produce a low time under load, and low loads, which produce a high time under load, produce very similar adaptations. <clears throat> the difference is in the acute experience of actually performing those loads and performing those time under loads. So on the whole, most people will find lower loads to produce higher levels of discomfort. So a high time under load is not particularly um, comfortable to actually perform. That's not to say you shouldn't use that with a client. This is where personal preference becomes a big factor in it. If you've got someone who dislikes the discomfort, then I would stick with a heavier load. Um, particularly if that discomfort is preventing them from pushing towards fa failure, because for a lot of people that will happen. Um, so it comes down to personal pre preference. If it's that first session, I would just stick with a moderate load. Find the Goldilocks zone and then experiment from there. Find out if there's someone who likes, if they're a little bit masochistic and they like that kind of discomfort. You know, if they're a little bit weird like me and they're happy to do a kind of four or five minute wall sit and uh, suffer through it. Um, if they like that, then give them that. Then that's going to be absolutely fine. If they don't, then back them off, move them towards the heavier end of the spectrum and try and avoid that acute discomfort so that you know, it doesn't potentially affect whether they want to come back to you. 